Welcome back to Vintage Recipe Hero, where I test retro recipes so you can make them fail-proof at home. This week's recipe is an easy stovetop version of a classic moussaka, but it's not actually classic at all as we're chopping up all the ingredients and making it on the stovetop. This week's recipe comes from a former Australian co-worker's mother's recipe card collection. So it's very exciting for me to try and recreate this as the instructions are a little bit dodgy and you can tell that she didn't actually need this recipe card when she was making it. There are such descriptions as tasty cheese and there's no descriptions as to how to chop your onion and pepper. So I've made quite a few guesses and tried to fill in the blanks in this recipe card, but I hope that it's going to be delicious. One thing I want to note before we get started is that along with the pinch of herbs, I have also added salt and pepper here. So I have half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of basil, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. There's no mention of salt and pepper in the whole recipe, but I figure with this much veggie and meat going in, we're gonna need at least a little bit of salt to zip it up a bit. As well as that, we are making a cheesy bechamel for this recipe, but there are no measurements at all. So I'm gonna start with half a cup of butter, half a cup of flour, and one cup of milk, along with one cup of cheese, which I find tasty. I'm guessing that's what she meant by that. I have shredded jalapeno Havarti and Parmesan, as well as extra, <sighs> as well as extra Parmesan to sprinkle on top afterwards. This is the one glass thing. Oh my God. One other thing to note is I'm not using tinned whole tomatoes. I found this tin of stewed tomatoes on the shelf and I'm kind of curious, so I want to use this today. I'm also using beef, but I'm sure that you could use lamb or pork as the recipe card just says mince meat. So if you're interested to decode this retro Australian moussaka recipe with me, keep watching because we're going to try and figure this out right now. Okay, it says to flour meat first. <laughs> I don't really know what that means, but uh, here we are, flour on the meat. Maybe that's a lot. Oh well. Fry onions, then meat in oil. I'm just going to add like a quarter teaspoon of salt to this. I just can't fry onions without a little bit of salt. She doesn't say until which point to fry the onions before adding the meat. So I'm gonna fry them until they're translucent and then go ahead and add my strangely floured meat. This looks good enough to add the meat now. I'm just gonna try and break it up a bit. She also doesn't mention if you're cooking the meat until it's completely brown before adding everything else or if you're just cooking it a little bit. I'm gonna cook mine until it's brown before I add everything else. I'm not sure why, I just have a kind of gut feeling about that. One other thing I wanna note is that because I'm using stewed tomatoes instead of tinned whole tomatoes, there is a few extra ingredients in here. There is also sugar, salt, dried onion, celery, green bell pepper, citric acid, and some spices. I just think that this is gonna to add to it a bit more because she also didn't mention on the recipe card what mixed herbs were in her pinch. So this might add a little bit more flavor to the dish. The meat is looking pretty well browned at this point. Eggplant, green pepper, tomato. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. I can see why she would have made this if she had two sons and a husband to feed. Seeing this, I'm starting to rethink my measurements for the bechamel, it might not be enough. Now we have to put on the lid and cook it at low heat for one hour. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. I'm gonna just check on it now. Oof. Wow, it looks like a lot of this liquid still needs to boil out. You know what, I just realized she never said to have the lid on this. I wonder if I cook the final half hour with the lid off if it'll take some liquid out. 
you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. This is it after another 25 minutes, this time with the lid off. It's looking really nice and comforting. As promised, I'm going to give this a taste and see if I want to cook it down longer or if I'm ready to make my bechamel and serve. Okay, let me taste this for seasoning and if I want to cook it down more. Mmm, it actually doesn't taste very beefy. Everything's kind of mixed together really nicely. The eggplant and pepper, while they still have their form, completely melts in your mouth in a lovely way. It does need more salt though. So what I'm gonna do is salt this. Boop. Liberally. And I'm going to put the lid on this, put it back here and start making my bechamel. So I've got about half a cup of butter. I'm gonna melt that down first. I cut my butter into cubes so it would melt more quickly and evenly. Okay, we're ready for our half a cup of flour. I am gonna trust myself with the spatula instead of using a whisk just because I don't feel like getting two tools dirty. That is the truth. Plus, I do love a spatula. Okay, see, no lumps. Now I'm gonna start gradually adding my milk. I may need more, I don't know. Now it's going to start to look like mashed potatoes. Delicious mashed potatoes. Wow, it's still very mashed potato-y. I might need more milk. Hey, looking nice and smooth. You know what though? I want to add a touch more milk. This is another quarter cup of milk. So what I'm going to do before I add the cheese and some seasoning is I just want to bring this up to a slow boil. The reason we want to bring this up to a slow boil is so that we can cook off the flour. Flour can carry a lot of bacteria in it. But just because we want it to slow boil doesn't mean we can stop stirring it because flour and milk don't stop sticking for anyone. You know what? This is getting a little thick again. I think I'm going to add another touch of milk. Oh, another quarter cup. Here's one. Here we go. All right. Let me add our cheese, our tasty cheese and Parmesan approximately one cup because what the hell has happened to this this looks so weird no ah uh, i might as well add a little salt i'm gonna add a touch of milk and see if it fixes these things touch of milk and a whisk let's see if we can save this What has this become? Maybe um, one cup of cheese is way too much because my whole bechamel has basically become a cheese ball. And I turned the heat on a maximum low before I added the cheese. Well, that's my cheese sauce. Seems weird. It's delicious. Okay. I'm going to put my cheese sauce on top of this and then I'll show you what it looks like. Ooh. World's thickest cheese sauce going on. Uh, how am I even going to get like a pretty picture of this? This is the moussaka with the very thick cheese sauce. And to finish it, she recommends some Parmesan on top. And we're back with yet another easy stovetop recipe completed. Yes, there was a minor hiccup there with the cheese sauce because I think I maybe over cheesed it and it got really thick and I had the heat on low. So I don't know, maybe the cheese still seized up, but I did try the cheese sauce as you saw and it tasted tasty. My mouth is watering. I'm ready to taste this. 
Mm. Mm. This is so good. I don't even like ground beef, but I'm thinking I'm becoming a convert now. Like all the vegetables have cooked down, but they still have the tiniest bit of crunch. They still kept their shape too. The meat, which I normally don't like ground beef because I find it a little chewy and tough and just overly beefy for my liking. It doesn't have an overly beefy taste and it also feels almost softer. The cheese sauce is so good. Kind of can't wait to take another bite of this. This is delicious. The Parmesan on top is a really nice touch. I gotta say, I'm not mad about having a whole pot of this to eat now. I'm gonna rate this nine out of 10. So delicious and not hard to make at all. Yes, there's quite a bit of chopping, but you only need two pots and you don't need a whole lot of instructions, clearly. Lid on, lid off. I don't know if it really matters that much. I did half and half and it's delicious. I hope you'll make this easy, non-traditional moussaka recipe. And if you make any modifications to it, please let me know in the comments below. I am open to hearing all of your lovely ideas about how to make this even more delicious. Thank you so much for watching this week. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you enjoy retro recipes, vintage cookbooks, or just seeing the wackiness that people used to get up to in the kitchen. I'll see you next week. I'm Jenny, and this is Vintage Recipe Hero. Bye. I've never tried moussaka before, but I'm so into it. Tasty cheese or not?